to the slaughter by frank l ludwig on good friday he burst into patrick pierre's study and brandished a rifle whoever should plan to kidnap me too better be a bloody quick shot he exclaimed at the terrified man calm down birthday boy it's hardly surprising that you are upset but hobson is safe he's only detained he caught wind of the rising but we'll free him on sunday now stop your chafe the O'Reilly laughed. You have got no equipment, no weapons. You'll pay a terrible price. We've a chance, for tonight we're expecting a shipment from Germany. Hell, what a blood sacrifice. On Saturday's calls for a cancellation were made since the shipment was lost, and a fierce O'Reilly traveled the south of the nation all night, countermanding the orders of Pierce. On Easter Monday he rose, and finding out the rising was going ahead, just like a dart he dashed over. Since I've helped winding up the clock, I have come here to hear it strike. He was welcomed, and Constance asked him with gladness, Did you not denounce this as mad? He replied, It's madness all right, but it's glorious madness, and joined the rebels with presage and pride. From Liberty Hall, to remove Ireland's gargets, some 400 passionate volunteers spread out to seize their respective targets. The O'Reilly was assigned to peers. They entered the GPO and gently let staff and customers out of the door. The O'Reilly and some others intently took up their posts on the busy first floor. In a phone box he found a young soldier, unable to post greeting cards at this awkward time since McCollins had tied him with telephone cable. Untie him. This man has committed no crime. Patrick Pierce proclaimed the Republic under the tricolor out on Sackville Street. Some sniggered at him and some gazed in wonder, but most took no heed and kept moving their feet. With the post office fortified, those in attendance heard O'Reilly say, We are dead meat now, and thus human sacrifices to independence. Let's hope that the Brits will exact them from us. A small troop of soldiers was sent to get answers as to what went on and got caught in a blaze of gunfire. The rebels shot four of the lances and a horse which lay dead on the road for five days. The O'Reilly watched as a crowd of civilians entered shops through the broken windows and doors and plundered fur coats and jewels worth millions. We die for their freedom and they loot the stores. On Tuesday evening, Lord Wimborne, in writing, declared martial law as the army clamped down on the rebels. The GPO saw no fighting, but they heard the gunfire throughout the town. On Wednesday, affairs got a little more iffy, when, being done with Liberty Hall, a gunboat named Helga attacked from the Liffey, and artillery answered the rebels' call. Surprised at the heavy bombardment, the gritty James Connolly took a deep breath and swore, I didn't expect them to shell the city center, being capitalists to the core. By Thursday, when Sackville Street was burning and the city center cordoned off, the lads came to terms with a very concerning awareness of pending defeat and scoff. On Friday afternoon, on the border of Doom, with a GPO on fire, the O'Reilly calmly received his last order and remarked, they keep saying that God loves a trial. Being asked to lead a small band as the curtain for the rebels fell and attempt one last bold dash for shelter, he said, it's the end for certain, but what if we'd missed this and died of the cold? With a dozen men he ventured the sally, but he was gunned down and collapsed in pain. He managed to drag himself into an alley and lay on a doorstep in Sackville Lane. An ambulance passed in the night, the alerted young driver got out to assist and went near, but an officer ordered him back and asserted, he's important, we've orders to leave him here. On Saturday morn, to his wife whom he cherished, he composed a note as he lingered on, clothed in green uniform. Then the O'Reilly perished, for a cause he endorsed, in a battle he loathed.